Hello everybody, this is Alex from SoyaChinchow.com and this is a COVID-19 Vaccine Malaysia update. This is a weekly show where we recap the latest developments of the COVID-19 vaccine as well as the National Immunization Program. Just a friendly reminder that this vaccine update is also available in Bahasa Melayu and you can watch it on the Soya Chinchow BM channel. You can click on the pop-up above or in the link in the description box below. How many vaccine supplies will be available in July? And is Malaysia planning to mix AstraZeneca with other vaccine? And also, should you fill up a Google form to get vaccinated earlier? This and more in this week's episode. Before we begin, here are some highlighted comments from the previous video. Low C28C said, When you go for the vaccination, you'll be interviewed by a doctor who will decide what is best for you on that day. So it's advisable to inform the doctor who interview you about all the medical condition and allergies that you have no matter how small or how serious it is. Do also tell the doctor that you might be pregnant if you're a lady. Thanks for sharing. And if you're pregnant, please bring along your pin book so that the doctors can better evaluate your situation. Chua SM said, Age 65 living in red zone, still waiting for appointment date while third phase is rolling out. Any idea what's going on or any ways to communicate with them to get a vaccination date? I would suggest that you report this in the My Sejahtera app. Just go to the My Sejahtera app, go to the home screen and then tap on help desk and then select A. 60 years and above, but not gotten appointment, and hopefully you receive one as soon as possible. Well, we said, we just started on April, but until now still no appointment. Why? Already 56 years old. If you're 56 years old, you're actually categorized under phase 3, which has just started. Phase 3 covers all remaining adults aged below 60 years old, and this appointment has been sent out in batches. From what we have observed, most of the phase 3 appointments that are sent out recently cover people that have registered in February. Slanger will receive more than 4 million doses next month, which is the largest in the country. The state aims to vaccinate 40% of the total population by the end of July. According to a table shared by the JKJAV to Code Blue, Sarawak will receive about 2.4 million doses, followed by KL and Putrajaya with 1.6 million doses, and Johor with 950,000 doses. In total, more than 14 million doses will be distributed nationwide in July alone. If you are a student that's going overseas to study, you can now request for early vaccination on the My Sejahtera app. Just launch the app, go to the home screen, and then tap on Help Desk. Then, select A for vaccine appointment, and then tap A again for I'm a student and need to travel to study abroad. You need to provide your My Sejahtera ID, your IC a passport number, as well as attach a supporting letter from your university. If you previously submitted a request by email to permohonan at vaccinecovid.gov.my, you don't need to reply again. The JKJV is aware of some random Google Forms that have been circulating on WhatsApp. Some of these Google Forms claim to be registration for waiting lists for the COVID-19 vaccine, but it's hard to determine who's actually behind it. There is a concern that some of these forms are collecting personal data illegally, and the JKJV wants you to avoid submitting your personal details through these suspicious forms. To register for the vaccine, you are recommended to do so through the official channels, which include MySejahtera or the vaccinecovid.gov.my website, or call in at 1-800-888-828. Malaysia is looking at the possibility of ordering more vaccines for a third jab. Minister of Science, Technology and Innovation, Kari Jamaluddin said the JKJV is looking at available data to determine how long can the current vaccines last and when a third dose is required. Most importantly, they are also looking into the effectiveness of the vaccine against the new Delta variants. Malaysia is also looking at reducing the interval for the AstraZeneca vaccine. At the moment, the AstraZeneca vaccine in Malaysia is adopting a 12-week interval whereby you get your second dose about three months after receiving the first dose. Due to the current COVID situation, Kyrie said there's a possibility of expediting the second dose for full protection, but the problem right now is supply. There's a delay of supply from the COVAX facility as well as a manufacturing facility in Thailand. The government is also looking at adopting a mix and match approach whereby Pfizer vaccines will be given to those who receive AstraZeneca as the first dose. This move is still being studied and it has to be approved by the local health regulators. According to an Oxford study, mixing Pfizer with AstraZeneca vaccines can produce better immune response. Based on data where the Pfizer shot was given four weeks after given AstraZeneca, they found high concentration of antibodies against the coronavirus spike protein. The latest findings offer support to EU countries that started offering alternatives to the AstraZeneca vaccine as the second shot. While the findings offer flexibility for the vaccine rollout, the trial data wasn't large enough to recommend a larger shift away from the current schedule. The results of mixing vaccines for the 12-week interval will be released soon. 
It's worth pointing out that the German Chancellor Angela Merkel has received the Moderna vaccine as a second shot after receiving AstraZeneca for the first shot. Under the recently announced Pumule Economy Recovery Initiative, Malaysia will be allocating 400 million ringgit to buy more vaccines. This will give the National Immunization Program the ability to buy more vaccines to cover 130% of the total population. The government has also allocated 200 million ringgit to open more vaccination centers. This will include more mobile PPVs, drive-through centers, and also door-to-door -door outreach programs. Healthcare frontliners involved in the vaccination program will get a boost in terms of special allowances from 200 ringgit to 600 ringgit for six months. This will involve an allocation of 200 million ringgit. To encourage more companies to conduct vaccinations under the public-private partnership or better known as PCAS, the government is allocating 150 million ringgit to help to reduce the cost. Lastly, senior citizens as well as people with disability can get a subsidy up to 30 ringgit to pay for their e-hailing or taxi fares to the vaccination centres during the appointment day. As of 29 of June 2021 at 11.59pm, Malaysia has administered a total of 7.8 million doses. A total of 5.6 million people have gotten at least one dose, which is 17.2% of the total population. Meanwhile, 2.2 million people have completed their vaccination with two doses, which is 6.8% of the total population. Sarawak currently has the most number of people with at least a dose with over 1 million people they have gotten the jab, which is 36.6% of the state's population. In terms of completed vaccinations, Selangor has the most with 287,127, followed by Sarawak with 246,259 people, and Johor with 233,239 people. As of 27 of June, over 16.5 million people have registered so far, which is 67% of the total population. Selangor has the most registration with almost 4 million people, followed by Johor with 2 million people, and Sarawak with 1.6 million people. That's all for now, and if you have any questions, please drop them down below and we try to answer them as soon as possible. Due to the rapid developments of the COVID-19 vaccine, some of this information might be out of date, so get the latest information on soyachinchow.com or check out the latest video on our YouTube channel. If you haven't registered, you can register at vaccinecovid.gov.my or do it at the MySuggestra app. Or you can call it at 1-800-888-828. This is Alex from soyachinchow.com. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye!